parishioners and friends, I welcome you as you listen to the service of Holy Communion this morning. The service follows the liturgy of the second Sunday after Trinity, but the hymns and the sermon remind us that this is also Father's Day, and so in my sermon I will be reflecting on the fatherhood of God. We commence our worship this morning by singing hymn number 350 for the beauty of the earth. of the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion can be found on page 180 of the prayer book. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The collect of the second Sunday after Trinity. This collect can be found on page 282 of the prayer book. Let us pray. O Lord, who never failest to help and govern them whom thou dost bring up in thy steadfast fear and love, keep us, we beseech thee, under the protection of thy good providence, and make us to have a perpetual fear and love of thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the sixth chapter of the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, beginning at the first verse. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So, you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God. In Christ Jesus. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 24th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. 
I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Thanks be to thee, O Lord. We affirm our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. The Creed can be found on page 182 of the prayer book. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of our minds be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today is the second Sunday after Trinity, and we have observed the liturgy of this day by following the appointed readings. But today is also being observed here and throughout the world as Father's Day. If we had been allowed to worship in this cathedral, the children and young people of Sunday school would have been playing a big part in the service, and I'm sure sharing with us in songs, poems and prayers their thanks to God for their fathers. So in my sermon today, I want to give thanks to God for our fathers and reflect on the fatherhood of God. When you say the word father, I wonder what words or pictures spring to mind. I've been thinking about this recently, and here are some of the pictures that have come to my mind. Protective, hard-working, dependable, courageous, strong. I hope that from your experience, you can identify all or some of these traits in your father that you can give thanks today that your father is protective, hard-working, dependable, courageous, and strong, and, of course, so much more. If this is true for you, then you are truly blessed. Because we know that it is not always the case for many children and young people. Some fathers sadly display negative and harmful traits in their lives and breed fear, hatred and resentment in the lives of their children. The Reverend Russ Parker is a priest of the Church of England who has visited this city on a number of occasions in his role within the Church's Ministry of Healing. He is an author of many books 
on the healing ministry. In one of his books, he tells the story of a young woman who has a difficulty in praying because of her relationship with her father. Her father is a sergeant major in the army and he treats his daughter as if she was one of the young soldiers in his charge. He expects perfection from his daughter in every respect of life. The young woman confides in Russ Parker that her father comes into her room and runs his finger along the window ledge. When he discovers some dust on the window ledge, he holds up his finger and gives a look to his daughter that says, failed again. This young woman has a genuine fear of her father, and that fear sadly has planted itself in her relationship with God. No longer is she able to pray the Lord's Prayer and to speak to God as Father, because she has come to picture God as her own human father, someone who wants to catch her out, someone who wants to humiliate her and to make her feel small and unimportant. What is your picture or image of God? Are you like the young girl who confidently told her mother that everyone would know what God was like when she had completed her drawing? Have you one picture of God when you are happy and a different picture of God when you are sad? Does God look different to you at certain times of your life or does he remain constant throughout? One day, Philip, one of Jesus' disciples, said to Jesus, Show us the Father. And Jesus replied, Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. When we look at Jesus and study his ministry, we get a very good picture of who God is and what he is like. The New Testament, and particularly the four Gospels, portray Jesus as someone who was interested in people and in their problems and worries. He spent time with them and attended to every need. People came to him in their hundreds and thousands from every part of the district because they knew that he was someone who cared, someone who would listen and help. Jesus invited people to come to him and their needs were never ignored. I have asked you, what is your picture or image of God? What image do you have in mind when you feel the need to be comforted and reassured? Let me share with you the image of God that helps me, not only in difficult times, but in fact at all times. This is not an image that I have imagined. It is in fact an image that is grounded in scripture. The God whom I know and love, whom I worship and serve, the God who meets my needs, is the God who is portrayed in the father of the prodigal son, of whom we read in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 15. The father had been insulted by his younger son, who demanded that his father give him his inheritance, the money that he would receive when his father died. The son was in fact saying to his father, I wish that you were dead now. Upon receiving his inheritance, the son went off and squandered the money in riotous living. When his money had dried up and his newfound friends had left him, 
he decided to return home. He was apprehensive, and so he should have been, of how his father would receive him. Would he be angry? Would he disown him? Would he turn him away? In fact, his father did none of these things. He had been waiting for years for his son to return. And when that day arrived, he gave a great party to welcome his son home. Instead of reading about an angry and resentful father, we see a father who is welcoming and forgiving. This is the God whom I know and trust. There is a children's chorus that begins with the words, My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. I heard someone say recently that if you think of your parents' love for you, then God's love for you is even greater than that. If you think of something good and lovely, then the goodness and love of God is many times greater than that. Some people have tried to explain the COVID-19 pandemic as God's way of punishing people for having ignored his rules, for having polluted his world, and for having lived self-centered and selfish lives. I find it hard to square this view with the welcoming and forgiving father of whom I read in the parable of the prodigal son. And that is the picture of God that I hope to hold on to for as long as I am able. Now to God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, we ascribe as our most justly due all might, majesty, power, dominion, and glory, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. We sing hymn number nine, There's a Whiteness in God's Mercy.
let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departeth this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him, Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, 
that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what's in John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. The Prayer of Humble Access We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, who suffered death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his Holy Gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine. According to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and give it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. soul of everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance of Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving.
let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. servants entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon me. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, 
Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. post-communion hymn is hymn number 565. Father, I place into your hands the things that I can't do. As the service draws to a close, I wish to thank those who have taken part this morning. Dr. Derek Collins, his wife Joanna, and their sons Dara and Leo, who led us in the singing of the hymns. Michael Joyce, who read the epistle. Clark and Elliot McClintock, who sang. Canon John Merrick, who celebrated Holy Communion. And Robert and Linda McGonigal, without whose cooperation and expertise, none of this would be possible. If we had been able to worship in the cathedral on next Sunday morning, the service would have been the rite of confirmation. And of course, our Bishop, Bishop Andrew Forster, would have been joining us. Even though we cannot meet physically in the cathedral next Sunday, Bishop Andrew has agreed to preach the sermon at next Sunday's service. We're looking forward to this very much, and I invite you to join us online on Facebook at 11 o'clock on next Sunday morning. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.